This podcast deals with disturbing subject matter. Listener discretion and headphones are advised. Hey guys, so a few things before we get started on this week's episode. So as you may have noticed, we are coming up on the end of season two. There's only a few episodes left, but both the episodes after this one are absolute doozies. We did something really special for the next episode, and for the final, I'm so excited for you to hear the narrator and the story. They're two of my favorites. Also, you may notice that the audio sounds a little bit different this time. I had some technical issues and had to change my recording setup to get this out, so sorry about that, but hopefully it's not too distracting. Although I am featured in the next episode as well, this is the last time that I'm narrating for season two. I just want to say thank you all for listening so much, and when we decided to move to using actors as much as we could, I could not have expected that it would have went as good as it did. I'm super proud of everyone's performances. Y'all did so great, and I'm super happy with everything that Dark Hero's been cranking out. These custom stories he's been writing are stellar, and I really cannot wait for season three um, when we switch over to him writing everything. So just again, thank you so much to everyone who narrated, including but not limited to Fanscape, Dodge the Grave, my wife Cynthia, myself, Flyover State Park, even my daughter did some parts and the two special guests that we have to come. But, no more delaying. Let's get to it. It's time to open the door to your mind, to your mind. Sit back and listen to true But be careful of what you allow in. in, 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 in. Because it's time to go through, 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 through. This week's story is the strangest security tape I've ever seen. Posted by user Powerhawk Mash to the Creepypasta Wiki. I work at a gas station in rural Pennsylvania. It's a boring job, but it's pretty easy and it pays all right. A few weeks ago, this new guy started. I'll call him Jeremy. Jeremy's weird. He's about 25 or 26 and he hardly ever speaks, but he's got the creepiest laugh I've ever heard. My boss and I have both noticed this, but it's never been a problem. So, there's not much we can do about it. Customers have never complained about him, and he's always done his job fairly well. Up until a few weeks ago, anyway. That's when things started to go missing. Employee theft can be a problem in any business that sells consumer goods, and there's only and there's only one person working at a time at this gas station. It's a pretty small place. About two weeks ago, my boss started noticing that we were short on motor oil. At first, it was just a few containers at a time, then entire shelves and boxes from the back room. Pretty soon, entire shipments would be gone the day after we got them, and it would always be right after Jeremy's shifts. My boss checked the security tapes from every single night he worked, but he could never catch him in the act. Jeremy would lock up at closing, and then the motor oil would be gone the next day. My boss usually takes the tapes home with him to try and catch Jeremy stealing, but His daughter had a softball game last night, so he asked me to watch the tape for him. He offered to pay me overtime under the table, so obviously I took that offer. There are three cameras, so he gave me three different tapes to check, and I figured it'd be a long night. But I'm trying to save up for vacation, so I really needed the money. I took the tapes home, popped them into an old VCR, and sat back. Two days ago, the last time he worked, Jeremy started at 4 p.m. Everything seemed pretty normal at first. He switched off with the girl who was working before him and waited for a customer. The first person who came in was Miss Templeton. The timestamp in the video read 4.03. A regular. She picked up her cigarettes and a newspaper and paid with a 20. 
Nothing unusual there. The next customer was some local guy named Ron. He drives a motorcycle and usually comes in every few days. He fills up his tank, got a big bag of beef jerky, and paid with his credit card, and then left. Next was some guy with a cowboy hat. I'd never seen him before, but we get plenty of strangers passing through, just like at any gas station. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel, paid with a $100 bill, and went on his way. I sat back and sighed. The only thing more boring than doing this job is watching someone else do it. My boss's offer was enough to keep me watching though, so I left the tape on. Everything seemed pretty normal. I had a feeling that if Jeremy was stealing motor oil, he knew we were suspicious of him by now. I didn't expect him to be dumb enough to let us catch him on camera. Things stayed boring and routine until about 5 o'clock. At 5.03, Miss Templeton came back in. She must have forgot something, but she didn't. She bought the same pack of cigarettes as before and the same newspaper, and she paid with another 20. That's odd, I thought, but then again, she is a little absent-minded. I thought Jeremy should have told her that she already got her smokes, but it, it's not against the rules to sell to someone the same thing twice. And that's when Ron came in again. He bought another tank of gas for his motorcycle again. I later checked the outdoor camera because I thought maybe he had another car that he wanted to fill up. And the same pack of beef jerky. He paid with his credit card. Again. No big deal. I figured this was just a weird coincidence. Miss Templeton is forgetful, and Ron probably owns more than one Harley. That's when the guy with the cowboy hat came back in, and I felt a chill run down my spine. Don't get diesel. Don't get diesel. I found myself whispering to my empty living room. But he did. He got $40 worth of diesel fuel and paid with another $100 bill. Every move he made was identical to his first visit, right down to the way he scratched his nose before he walked out. Either this guy's rich, owns a lot of trucks, and just moved into town, or something really bizarre was happening. I, I kept watching. Every customer for the next hour was the same as before. Every single one. I was seriously freaked out, and then at 6.03, Miss Templeton walked back in, and she bought her cigarettes and newspaper again, and paid with a 20 again, and I thought I was going to lose it. I only watched another half hour before I started fast-forwarding through the rest. It was all the same. Every customer would come in at the exact same times. Exactly one hour apart. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sneaky motherfucker Jeremy had messed with the tapes. He'd run a loop at the first hour of business over and over. That wasn't the case. There are windows around the cash register area that the camera covers, and I watched the sunlight fade as time went on. Jeremy's routine didn't loop over. He swept, mopped, restocked, and did all his duties exactly how you would expect. But the same customers kept coming in. I was panicking at this point. Something was seriously wrong with what I was seeing, and I had no explanation for it. I skipped ahead to when he locked up and walked out to his car. He hadn't stolen anything. But I kept watching just to make sure. I fast-forwarded one last time to about midnight. At exactly 12.03. Out of nowhere, Jeremy's face pops up on camera. And I don't mean he moved his head into view. I mean that one second the store was empty. The next second, his face was all I could see. He wasn't looking at the camera. He was looking at me. I was sure of it. I screamed and fumbled for the remote. By the time I grabbed it, he was gone. Just as soon as he had left. One frame he was there, and the next, he wasn't. My hands were shaking like crazy, but I popped in another tape. The other indoor camera shows the back area by the cash register, and I would have been able to see how he got up to put his face in the camera like that. I skipped ahead to 12.03, but there was nothing. I would have been able to see him standing on a chair or something on this tape, but he wasn't there. I didn't see him enter the store at all after he left. It's like, it's like he wasn't really there. He doesn't know the security code and no alarms were triggered that night after he locked up. What I did see, however, was that at 12.03, the murder oil vanished 
off the shelf. All of it. Same as Jeremy's face. One second it's there, and the next, it wasn't. I turned that tape off, and I went to bed. But I didn't get a wink of sleep. My body's exhausted right now, but my mind, my mind is racing. That tape was undoubtedly the creepiest, most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. I work in a few hours. My boss asked me to bring the tapes back in and let him know what I'd found, but really, what the hell am I going to say? Jeremy works the night shift tonight, directly after me, and the plan is for my boss to come in just before I leave and confront him with me, as I'm supposed to be the one who caught him. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I suppose I'll have to show my boss the tapes, but I don't want to watch them with him. I never want to see something like that again. I can't get the image of Jeremy just smiling directly into the camera out of my mind. It was the creepiest look I've ever seen on another human being's face. Anyway, I'm going to try and get some last minute sleep before I have to go in and deal with this. I'll let you guys know what happens. 2.49 PM. Updating from my phone. Apologies in advance for errors. My boss just finished watching the last of the tapes, and I told him what to expect, but you really can't prepare for someone for something like that. He's scared shitless. I still am too, and Jeremy's due to come in at four. We've got a little over an hour to get our shit together, but neither one of us knows what to say to him. Is he just a fucked up guy who likes to steal motor oil and scare the shit out of people, or is he something else? I don't know if this is crazy, but... Does anyone think he could have anything to do with the time loop? My boss said he never noticed anything like that in the other tapes, but the way he popped up in this one made me think he knew I would be watching. It's like he wanted me to see what he could do, like he was showing off or something. The way he smiled into the camera was like a little kid showing you a sandcastle they just built or something. I don't know. I probably sound crazy sure feel the part. I'm going to talk to my boss some more. We have to calm ourselves down and figure out how to handle this. I'll update again tonight, but I have a really bad feeling about how this is going to play out. Update, 4.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update, 5.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 6.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 7.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 8.33 p.m. No sign of Jeremy. Tried calling him, but his phone's been disconnected. We're calling the police. Update. 10.58 p.m. Holy shit. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. I just got home and I saw the previous updates. Things make less sense now than ever. Here's what I can tell you. I went to work and Jeremy never showed up. My boss and I decided to call the police, as you're well aware. When I picked up the phone to call, though, the sun went out. I shit you not, that's what I thought happened. Apparently, I blacked out for exactly five hours, because when I looked up at the clock, it was 9.33. I think I got stuck in Jeremy's time loop, and then I snapped out of it at the exact point I blacked out, if that makes sense. But that's when things got really weird. My boss was right next to me when I blacked out, ready to corroborate my story to the cops, and when I came to... The phone was in my hand, but it was dead. Not even a dial tone. My boss was still right there, but he wasn't moving. He was standing up, but frozen. I looked at the clock again and it wasn't moving. The second hand was stuck on the 12. It was 9.33, exactly. The clock on the register, a uh, computer screen, wasn't moving either. My phone was frozen. There was even a customer at the register waiting for my boss to get him his cigarettes. I'm betting that would have been his fifth pack for the day. I got the fuck out of there. I didn't lock up, I didn't turn the lights out, and sorry guys, I did not grab the security tapes to upload to the internet. 
Believe me, that was the last thing on my mind. The gas station is on a major highway and cars were parked all along it, except they weren't parked, they were frozen. The people inside were sitting still as wax statues and I got in my car and prayed that it would start. Thankfully, it did. About halfway home, time started up again. The static from the radio turned into music like it's supposed to be and from what I could tell from listening to the host talking between songs, no one noticed the time freeze or whatever it was. I was the only one. Well, I'm sure Jeremy noticed as well. I still have no clue where he is or what he's doing. I'm hiding in my room and calling the police again in the morning. I don't know if I ever got through to them before or if I did, whether they took me seriously. I'm scared for my life at this point. I'll update tomorrow if I can. Final update, 10.33 a.m. I finally fell asleep last night around 4. I have no idea how I did it. I guess exhaustion finally got the best of me. This morning I woke up to my phone ringing. It was my boss. He'd been calling me since about 6. He woke up when the time turned back on last night and immediately called the cops. They came by to see what was wrong and he told them everything. The police around here are all small time guys. They were more concerned with the missing motor oil than anything, but my boss figured he would take it. As long as he had their attention, they decided to go looking for Jeremy. We keep all of our employees' applications on file, and since Jeremy just started working here, he was easy to find. They checked the address on it and headed over to his house, and you're not going to believe what they found. The address Jeremy had listed on his application was an empty lot. Or at least now it is. There used to be a house there, but it burned down in 1993. Being a small town, almost everyone remembers that fire. A family of four used to live there way back when. Rumor has it that they had a strange son, who they never really talked about. But I, I can't say for sure if that's true. What I can say is true is that after an insurance investigation, the fire was ruled an arson. The entire house was soaked in oil and torched with a Molotov cocktail. And the entire family was sleeping when it happened. None of them survived. They never caught the guy who did it. Rumor has it that when they tried to contact the estranged son, no one could find him. Anyway, my boss called and told me this, and I freaked out. Then he asked me to come to the gas station. What are you, what, are you crazy? I said, but he assured me that the cops were there with him, and then he dropped a bomb. The FBI were also in town, and they were going to talk to me one way or another so I might as well come in. It was about 7.15 and I wanted to go back to bed, but I figured I wouldn't be able to sleep much more anyway, so I went down. Four men in suits greeted me and told me to have a seat. We went over everything two or three times until they got all the details down. I told them about Jeremy, the security tape, last night at work, everything. Finally, after I finished, one of the agents said, Oh Christ. We got another one on our hands. Then they made me sign a bunch of papers saying I wouldn't tell anybody about what happened. So, I can't say much more. I might be breaking the law just by posting this. Now I'm home. I'm not sure what to do with myself. That agent's words when I told him the story, they're gonna haunt me for the rest of my life. Anyway, I've gotta go. I got some errands to run today, and then I have to go to work to pick up some tapes. My boss and I think the new guy Jeremy, he's a complete creep, is stealing motor oil. And I have to watch the security footage to see if I can catch him doing it. I have better things to do, but my boss is paying me overtime, under the table, and I'm trying to save up for a vacation, so I could really use the money. It should be really simple, the oil always goes missing right after his shifts. I figure I'll just watch the tapes, catch him in the act, and that'll be that. Through the Fog is recorded and edited by Hop. Intro and outro by Katie Kemp. For more stories, go to www.throughthefog.org. We'll be back in two weeks. 
so keep your eyes on the floor.